Okay, so in this video real quick, I want to finish up kind of more of the theoretical aspect for chapter two. This is gonna go over the aspect of Boolean arithmetic and how it will be applied in the ALU. So specifically, it's gonna go over addition and how we derive signed and unsigned data, and then finally, how we can utilize that to expand upon our functionality of addition by maybe maybe subtraction or something like that. So let's go ahead and hop on over and just see how it works. So as seen in the diagram of our ALU, we need to create additional ways to perform operations on binary numbers. So currently what we have is say an AND 16 or an OR 16, some operations like that, but we obviously need more. We can't do a lot of actual arithmetic with just that. So maybe we wanna make, we're obviously gonna make addition. We already talked about addition in the previous video. Let's talk about, we can make a subtraction, we can make multiplication, uh, we could talk about division, but we're just not going to because uh, hardware-based division is very, very difficult, even in industry level. So and there are a lot of resources on that, but it's really hard to digest that all at once. So just ignore division for now. These two, pretty easy. However, while these two are fairly easy, this is the only one we're gonna be focusing on in hardware. For multiplication, that's gonna come later when we get to assembly because it's actually a very straightforward way to show how we can create something from scratch using assembly based on our already existing hardware. So it's gonna be used to expand our already useful functionality. Now, basic addition, kind of went over already. Uh, this is what we're used to, decimal. We have uh, two values being added to begin with. That's gonna be five, two, seven. There's no carry bit. Seven plus six, that overflows, gets three. Carry bit, eight plus five plus one is four with a carry bit. One plus seven is eight, no carry bit, and we get 8,437 which is the correct answer. Meanwhile, over here, we have binary addition. So again, start with two. Zero plus one is one. All three of these, zero plus one plus one is zero with the carry bit. These two together, technically, there's always three. One plus zero plus zero is one. Zero plus one plus zero is one. And we have no carry bit here. Okay, now I did specify three here for a reason and paying attention to this for a reason because in in the higher level theoretical math that we're doing here where we're just adding some arbitrary numbers together we can ignore all of this we can ignore all of this it's not a big deal and we can ignore these and this the only one that we really care about is really this one because it's the only thing that has a carry however in hardware, this is not the case. These values exist because the hardware traces also exist. We can't ignore them. They have to do something with them. So that's why I specified that earlier. Now, here, computers represent integers using a fixed number of bits, also called a word size. Everything in this video and this lecture slide is going to utilize a word size of four. That indicates we'll be using four bits, but everything in the hack computer throughout the course is using 16 because it utilizes 16 bits. We're making a 16 bit computer. So that's what it's using. But for the slides and for the more just educational purpose of how this works, four bits is more than enough. So we've already done basic binary addition. This is kind of how it's structured. This is actually shows better how all of it works. So we have the initial, let's just view this as A, this is B, and these is kind of carry bits of C. So initially we have A plus B is zero and one is one. A plus B plus C is going to be zero with the carry bit. Repeats this, we one with no carry bit. And one with no carry bit and we're good. And this would be a very similar one. We have one plus one is zero. Carry bit gets added. So one plus zero plus zero is one. Zero plus zero plus one is one and so on and so forth and yes there is going to be a carry bit here just specifically because of this example right here so let's take a look one plus zero one no carry bit 
zero plus one plus one is zero with a carry bit. One plus one plus one is one with a carry bit. And then one plus zero plus one is zero with a carry bit. However, our word size is four. Everything in our computer is going to be using four bits. But with this carry bit at the end, it gives us a fifth bit. So what do we do with that? Well, for all intents and purposes, we just ignore it. We just treat it like it doesn't exist because it would break our hardware. And there, there are reasons why we do that, but mostly it's because it would be very, very difficult to handle this and it would exceed the actual restrictions of our hardware. Same thing would happen in a 16-bit computer, 32-bit computer, 64-bit. Just ignore the overflow, it will wrap around and it is fine. You just have to be careful. So that same algorithm, uh, just ignore this, where we start with two and then go with three every other step, we'll translate to every single word size you can imagine. So if you went in the future and got a 128-bit computer, this would still translate. It's just going to start with two values, continue on with three every single step until eventually you're done. So addition is never really going to change. Now, moving on to signed and unsigned data. Before we get to that, we don't always want the full bus width of our computer. We don't always want to utilize a full word size. So in this case, they have obviously a 64-bit computer, so the largest size here. So make a modern computer where you have integers that are 32 bits, shorts are 16 bits, and longs are 64 bits. We don't always utilize all 64 bits. It's a little bit much. And the operations do inherently take longer because you're operating on more data. So it usually is better to have something here with a decent scope, 30 food bits, half of your actual word length is pretty good, and not too much. So 16 would be a little bit too low, you can't represent as much with that, but it is inherently faster, whereas 32 is a good median. However, we sometimes want a bit more. So with signed and unsigned, we have the ability to shift the scope a little bit. So if we imagine zero here, and we have signed data, we get 16, and we're doing 32 bit, it's the same 32 bit enter. We get 16 bits of positive data and 16 bits of negative data. Well, 16 bits minus one because you have to count for zero. But basically, the scope is split in half at zero. So half of it's negative, half of it's positive. However, if we want a bit more of a high, higher values, we can choose to do unsigned data, which gives you the full scope in strictly non-negative data. So zero until all 32 bits are used. So that is one of the differences between signed and unsigned data. And this really is useful if you need a lot of data being represented, you don't care about negative numbers, you can use a full 64 bits of the data type and longs, and you get as much scope as you can possibly represent in your hardware. So a lot of the time what we default to, at least in C and C++ for the most part, it's a good old 32 bits, 16 negative, and 16 positive. Or well, 16 not, not negative, because again, zero does count. So that's what we're most used to. Now, doing unsigned data is generally pretty easy. Representing negative data in binary is not straightforward, but we'll get to that. So, signed data types have a range of negative two to the n minus one to two to the n minus one minus one, where n is the number of bits we can represent. So again, there's our word size. So ours is four. So we have negative zero and positive in sign data. So let's take a look. What's our range on word size of four? Negative two to the four minus one, which is three. That looks like negative eight. 
through two to the n minus one, which is going to be two to the three, so two cubed, which is also eight minus one. So we have eight through seven. So that's our range. Again, we start at zero. Half of it goes into negative, half of it goes into positive. Whereas unsigned is strictly non-negative. We have zero through uh, two to the n, which means 16 minus one, so zero through 15. So the entirety of it goes into non-negative data. So what we have here is the actual representation of unsigned data. Now, keep in mind, our word size is still n equals four. We represent the full capacity of bit combinations zero through 15. So what we have here is the actual representation of unsigned data. Now, keep in mind that our word size is still n equals four, so that means we have four bits to work with. We're gonna represent the full capacity of bit combinations because we don't have to worry about polarity, we don't have to worry about the actual sign of it. It's just the data is going to be exactly what it shows it is. It's gonna be zero through 15, that is four zeros through four ones. So zero through 15. So each time we'll just increment by one, like so, until eventually we reach 15. The data is exactly what it says it is, and it's very, very simple. No weird things happening just yet. However, we get to sign data, and we have to be a bit careful here. This does say incorrect, and it says it for a very good reason. Because this is something that is shown pretty frequently as a means to represent signed data. And by that, it means it can show both positive and negative data. Because there's a very specific way that we represent the actual polarity. We'll touch on that in just one second. But if you do it in a less than, well, I don't know if correct is the right word, but I'm gonna use correct here. If you do it in a less than correct way, then you're going to break hardware, at least hardware compatibility. Because one thing that we need to keep in mind is that the representation of our signed data needs to coincide with our actual unsigned data. So since we're writing one set of hardware, we need to make sure that it works with both our unsigned data and our signed data. If it only works with one of them, then it's a completely busted system and there's no reason to use it. And if we try to write an implementation of signed data, that means that we have to rewrite our hardware to specifically represent it, then it's just a failure of a system. It should not be used. It should be synonymous regardless of what data you're trying to represent. Now, with all that being said, let's just take a look at this incorrect way. Word size is still n equals four, four bits. All zeros through all ones. And over here, that's still zero through 15. We have 16 values we can represent. With this, we represent half of the full capacity, but if we look at this, we need to notice something very weird very quickly. We have negative seven through seven, which breaks kind of what we saw earlier. Because of this, we have a negative zero. We would have to revise our hardware to handle this negative zero because that, that doesn't exist. Zero cannot be negative. It doesn't have polarity. It is strictly neutral. Now, I digress. What this does do correctly is use the MSB, or the most significant bit, which is the leftmost bit, to dictate the polarity of the sign. So what that means, and how we have half of our actual capacity, is we're only using the first three bits, the three rightmost bits, to count. So we have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, so on and so forth, until we reach here which is seven, one, one, one. And then we go back to zero, which is where we get the negative zero. Because this is gonna be the exact same thing, zero through seven. And in theory, this looks like it works quite well because all we're doing is looking at our leftmost bit, the MSB, and seeing is it zero or one. If it's zero, 
that means it's not negative. And if it is a 1, that means it is negative. And again, in, in theory, this works pretty well at trying to demonstrate how the most significant bit represents the negative and non-negative data. However, again, negative 0 just doesn't exist and it will completely break everything. So what do we do? Well, we do something like this, which is using the concept of two's complement. More on that in a bit, but let's just take a look at what is happening here. So, word size n equals four. Again, we represent half the full capacity of bit combinations. However, we start at negative eight and go through negative one, then have zero to seven. There is no negative zero. So this is perfectly compatible with existing hardware because it does not contain a value that doesn't exist. So, four zeros, four ones, zero through 15. Still have 16 values to work with. Zero through seven are going to be exactly the same. Still using the first three bits to count. And then we get to where our most significant bit becomes one. And it's true, this is all going to be negative data. However, instead of starting with negative zero, we start with negative eight. Then we get negative seven, and negative six, negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one. So what's happening here is we're considering this kind of overflow, in a way. So instead of counting from lowest to greatest, we're counting from our greatest value, negative eight, down. So if we view it as 16 minus the value, that's what we would get. So 16 minus 15 would be one, 16 minus 14 is two, 16 minus 13 is three, so on and so forth. And we just view it as if though it is always gonna be negative if you get an MSB of one. So specifically, representation. Something, word size equals n bits, four for us. The two's complement of x is divided by two to the n minus x. The negative x is coded by two's complement of x. I need to do one thing real quick. I need to change this, and I need to change this. Uh, this is taken directly from the Nanotetris sl uh, slides. That's why the quality of this font is a little bit grainy. It is literally a screenshot. But in my past, this representation should be a little better at conveying what is being said. So, if we want to get a negative value, then I'm just going to do this, and I'll explain it in a second. If we get a, a negative value of x, so negative x, it's coded in the two's complement, which is two to the n minus x. So if I want to get the negative of five, per se, what I would do is two to the n minus five. So this would get me the value of negative five. So two to the n, again, four, 16 minus five, like I said earlier, gives us 11, 11, is coded as negative five. Okay, so let me just take a look down here at the from decimal to binary representation. So, if x is greater than or equal to zero, let me, this one I do want to change. This one makes sense. This one you'll see what's gonna happen. So if x is greater than or equal to zero, we return just the binary representation of x. So if I do four, then that is greater than equal to zero, so I just look for four and get the binary value. So that would be zero, one, zero, zero. No big deal. Meanwhile, if x is less than zero, then return binary to the n, they say minus x, but here's why that kind of breaks if I do negative four. 
then I would do to the n minus negative four, which doesn't work, so that's why I'm changing this to plus. I think it's maybe a type of an oversight, so forgive me on that. But basically, what's gonna happen is we have two to the n, which we know is four, plus negative four. That is going to be 16 minus four, which is 12. So I look for 12, that's negative four, and I get one, one, zero, zero. That's pretty much it. It's not too bad. That's just a huge compliment. And for binary to decimal, if I have MSB equals zero, I know for sure it's not a negative value, so I just return decimal to bits. So if I had, say, zero, one, one, zero, I just go look for it, and it's, uh, it's six. Yeah, this is six. Meanwhile, if MSB is one, then I return a negative sign, and then two to the n minus the decimal bits. So let me think. That's gonna be 16. And I'm doing I'm trying to think. I want maybe one zero one zero. Yeah, that'll work. One zero one zero. So two to the end which is sixteen minus whatever one zero one zero is. Which is ten. So sixteen minus ten. It gives me a negative six. Which is exactly what I got. So yeah. That shouldn't be too bad. Now, let's do some actual math with them. So let's do six plus negative two. Looking at it, I should be able to tell that this is going to be four, because it's just six minus two. So let's take a look. Six, it is a positive value, so it's just six. Negative two, well, we need two's complement, so we do 16, which is two to the n, which is r two to the word size. So I'm just gonna say uh, 16. So 16 minus two is 14. Six plus 14 is 20. We do the modulo by two to our word size, which is 16. So 20 modulo 16 equals four, which codes as four, which is exactly what we wanted. Now, take a look at this, we have three plus negative five. Looking at that, we should get negative two. Three is positive, so it's just three. Negative five is gonna be 16 minus five, that's 11. Add those together, we get 14. Modulo 16, well, 14 is less than 16, so it's just the entirety of it. So we get 14, and we do 16 minus 14 gives us two, so it should be negative two. It's exactly what it is. Meanwhile, we have negative two plus negative five. Well, that should be negative seven. 16 minus two is 14. 16 minus five is 11. Add those two together, we get 25. Module 16, we have a remainder of nine, and nine carries itself as negative seven. So not too bad, pretty straightforward. So let's take a look at this one. Okay, just looking at this, I should get a negative three as a result. Four minus seven, negative three. So four is positive. Negative seven is negative, so 16 minus seven should be, I think, oh, I'm having a brain, uh, nine, sorry at a moment. Add these two together, I get 13. Modulo 16, 13 is less than. We get 13 as a result, and 13 codes as negative three, which is exactly what we want. And then meanwhile we have negative two plus negative four should be negative six. 16 minus two is 14. 16 minus 2 is 14, 16 minus 4 is 12. Add those together, I get 26. Modulus 16. I have a remainder of 10. And 10 cuts itself as negative 6. So that's not too bad. And then again, 13 notch to 16 gives us negative 3. And then negative 6 for the next one. 
So, this little note right here is very, very important. When doing this with binary, if you ever come across an overflow bit, like so, then ignoring the overflow bit is the binary equivalent of modulo 2 to the n, in our case, which has been the modulo 16 that we've been doing every single time. So that is why we do the modulo 16 in the previous slides, is because it's the equivalent of ignoring our overflow bit. So it guarantees we don't ever have a value that exceeds our actual bus width. So, 6 plus 9 2, again, 4. Add these together, we get 10100, zero, zero, zero. drop the overflow bit. And then we have 0, 1, 0, 0, which is 4. 3 plus negative 5 is negative 2. Add these together. Uh, there's no actual overflow bit, so we're good. And we end up with 1, 1, 1, 0, which looks like it is 14, which codes itself as negative 2. And then we have negative 2, negative 5, which gives us negative 7. Add these together. We get 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. Drop the overflow bit. Gives us 1, 0, 0, 1 which codes itself as negative 7. Not too bad. So, subtraction isn't too bad, theoretically. Because we know that if we have x minus y is logically equivalent to x plus negative y. So all we're doing is changing the polarity of our second value. But how do we do that? Well, take a look. So we have a fairly complicated equation having on here. Uh, 2 to the n minus x. And we have 1 plus 2 to the n minus 1, which is always going to be the full range of your bits, all 1 in our case. So this is the maximum value you can get and then we subtract x from it. So what this actually boils down to is we are flipping our bits and incrementing it. That is it. So, so I'm going to an example down here. We want to convert this 2 to negative 2. Well 2 is 0, 0, 1, 0. And if we look at the table we should end up with 1110 as a result so if we flip the bits of 0010 0, 0, 0, we end up with 1101 1, just like here we add one so I'm just gonna put the zeros here these two together give me this 10101 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, which gives me 1110 which is negative 2 just like so it's not too bad. So, let's take a look at converting negative 6 to positive 6. So, we start with 1010, zero, zero, which is right here. I should end up with 0110. One, zero. Let's take a look at it. So, 1010 zero, zero becomes 0101. Zero, zero, one. That's me flipping each individual bit. And then I add 1 to that. These two together is going to be 0, carry a 1, 1, 1, and then 0. So 0, 1, 1, 0, which is 6. So that overall shouldn't be too bad. So basically what we've done is gone over the concept of addition, done in binary, and then we learned about the difference in signed and unsigned data and learned how to convert the polarity of our data based around our two's complement. So, overall, it's mostly straightforward. There is a good bit of information to digest here, but I don't think anything of it is too egregiously difficult. But regardless, I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next video.